What is going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Blue. This time, we'll be flying with Air Canada in the Airbus A330 for an eight and a half hour trip from Barcelona to Montreal, Canada for the ninth and so far, my toughest flight of the Moser Racing Formula One World Tour. We have been traveling to each Formula One Grand Prix destination around the world, virtually transporting drivers, VIPs, various high priority cargo, and upgrades. And thanks to Moser Racing, one of you can also expect a major upgrade to your home racing rig setup for free at the end of the season just for participating. But if you haven't heard about the giveaway or you would like to join us, there's a link in the description that will take you to our F1 World Tour website that explains exactly how to get started. But let's not waste any more time because we have a lot to talk about and discuss during our cruise. Plus Plus, one of the most difficult approaches I have ever flown. Cool. Alright, let's reach up to the top and get battery 1 and 2 on, as well as the external power. Oh yeah. And then we'll go ahead and clear out the master caution here. And I will finish up the overhead. And pop on the no smoking sign. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is your flight attendant speaking. At this time, please be sure to make sure all large carry-on items are in the overhead bin and your small items are underneath in front of you. Lima Echo Bravo Lima to Charlie Yankee Uniform Lima. And flight number is Air Canada 823. And cruising at flight level 340. Echo Bravo Lima Airport information Golf zero nine zero 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 weather wind one one eight at three visibility one zero thousand sky condition few clouds at three thousand five hundred temperature two four two point one seven Q and H one zero one seven advise on initial contact you have information Golf we have information Golf Q and H one zero one seven there we go Golf zero nine zero zero and we will be departing runway zero six left using the departure MOPA to Alpha here in Barcelona. We'll go down, scroll down to Mopaz, and we'll continue putting in our flight plan leading us across the Atlantic. So let's take a look at our flight plan. So 06 left here is north of the field. This is where we'll be departing. And then we'll go ahead and X out of this. You can see our entire flight plan as we scroll into the Barcelona area. Here is the map of our departure. We'll take off, make our right, and then another right, and then another right, leading us back to the north and over the city as we depart Barcelona and depart Spain through France, across the Atlantic Ocean, and over into Canada. Here is Montreal. We're expecting the ILS 06 left here as well. And you can see that here on the chart. So flight plan is complete. We are ready to start up the APU. Click on the APU master switch here. And we need to wait for the rear APU flap to open up. There it is, APU flap open. Let's reach back up to the top and hit the APU starter. Beautiful, all right, seat belts on and beacon light on. We are ready for pushback. Now connected and bypass being inserted. Release parking brake. All right, brace release, clear to push, tail west. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Copy. Welcome aboard Air Canada. Bienvenue à bord Air Canada. For your safety and comfort, we ask that you pay attention to this short video. So join us as we explore all that Canada has to offer. For your security and your comfort, be attentive to this short video. Please place baggage in the overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. Thank you for choosing to fly with Air Canada. Merci d'avoir choisi Air Canada.
doing good on time. We are taxiing out the runway 06 left. And you can see up ahead of us, there is a Vuelings Airlines A320 right there on our right. That was our ride last week from Monaco to Barcelona. Pretty sweet. Just holding short of the runway, let's go ahead and get all of our lights set for takeoff. And we're just gonna do one last check of the overhead, make sure we're good to go there. Everything looks good to me. Yeah, beautiful day to fly, beautiful morning. And we are clear for takeoff runway 06 left, clear to the right and clear to the left. Let's go. And just get lined up here on the runway, pointed right into the sun for this departure. Oh yeah, run it up. by Barcelona. Flight level 340, we cruising. Eight hours to go, and we're doing about 407 knots ground speed. And we have about a 67 knot headwind. But check out the view out the left side of the window. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Wow. I have to say, I'm surprised. I'm using a new program today called Auto Ortho, which basically streams photo real ground textures to you just like Microsoft Flight Sim, but for X-Plane, which is a huge game changer. And so far, like I said, I'm very surprised just how good it looks. I'm not having any stutters, no FPS drops, at least not on my NASA computer. As you guys know, I love to jump between Microsoft Flight Sim and X-Plane for our Moza Racing uh, F1 World Tour flights. And I'm actually surprised. I'm, it's looking really good. I'm looking forward to doing more X-Plane flights with the ortho down below. I don't have to download the entire world. It looks really good. But let's go into the cabin and let's talk racing. Let's talk a lot has been going on this week in racing in Formula One in Le Mans. So let's start there. The Le Mans 24 hour race. This is actually the first year I've actually paid attention to the Le Mans 24 hour race. I actually followed along throughout the race. I didn't watch all 24 hours of it, of course, but I jumped in and out a lot more than usual. I think the reason why is because I kept checking in on the garage 
56 car. That was the main car I was interested in. That thing sounded so good. It was such a great representation of like American cars and American racing. But the race itself was actually really interesting. A lot of like drama, a lot of lead changes, a lot of passing, a lot of crashes. The rain really mixed it up a lot. One gripe I did have was that I wish that they would pay more attention to the lower classes. The majority of the time, I feel like I was just watching the hypercars go around the track but you know congrats to ferrari on their win speaking of ferrari formula one the barcelona grand prix was a pretty decent race again red bull dominated the entire weekend but i'm happy to see lewis hamilton and george russell both get on a podium for mercedes double podium but next we have f1 in canada which is why we're flying there this is the home race of lance stroll and aston martin are bringing some major major upgrades to the race looking forward to seeing how those perform hopefully they'll close the gap a little bit more to red bull and have a better chance for a win because right now it looks like the best chance of beating red bull is either going to come out of aston martin or maybe even mercedes but sadly ferrari is just not looking very competitive this year they're just kind of falling off they're trending downward uh, every race which is sad to say but uh hoping for just a good race uh, maybe some unpredictability maybe some weather who knows uh canada north america here we come We're almost there. The city of Montreal, Quebec, off our nose. Yeah, it's been a long flight, but we're almost there. You can see right down below us, downtown the city and the track itself off our wing. Sweet. The only thing we have to worry about now is the weather. Wow, we're on downwind for runway 06 left, and we have flown into some horrible weather surrounding Montreal airports, getting moderate turbulence, heavy, heavy rain, and it's, it's crazy out here. Sheesh, and the turbulence keeps knocking our autopilot off. You can see just how bad the weather is around us on the weather radar. We have red right ahead of us, and there's the autopilot again. All right, here we go. Short final, runway zero, six left into Montreal. The weather is horrible flying it by hand because the turbulence keeps knocking off our autopilot so we have to do this manually here in the airbus a330 and little low score to get add some power in there come on the wind is blowing us around let's get those auto brake sets those spoilers sets and look at that winds blowing us to the right side now earlier it was blowing me to the left so winds are kind of swirling out here we're definitely high. Can we save it? I don't know. Just doesn't look good. Oh, yeah. Now we're ballooning. Yep. Yeah. No way. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. This is ridiculous. Yeah. We're going to have to go around. Going around. Air Canada 116. Going around. Gear up. 
Back make a climbing left turn to 2,000 feet. We'll fly to missed approach and try it again. I have to say, this is probably the worst weather I think I've ever tried to fly in. We're getting really bad gust, pushing us both left and right, up and down. Crazy turbulence. I can barely see anything, and autopilot doesn't work. So let's try this again, gears down. Runway is right ahead of us, 500 feet. So I have the controls. Let's try to keep it stable. It's very difficult to keep a steady airspeed with the gusty winds. All right, we're a little low. I have some power here. All right, slip it over to the right. Come on. We got it. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, 10, 5. Reversers. <laughs> I had to work for that one. Man, if you could only see my joystick and how much I had to move around. Oh my god. Don't tell the passengers, but that weather definitely threw me off. I mean, it was literally tossing us around. It was crazy. Definitely one of my most difficult and toughest flights yet. But we got a landing rating of 298 and we made it. So let's bring it into the gates and hopefully you guys enjoyed the flight and will enjoy the race weekend. Next week, we will be flying to Austria for the Austrian Grand Prix. But thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video.